Hi, this is Tom from ZeroToFinals.com. In this video, I'm going to be going through aortic dissection. And you can find written notes on this topic at ZeroToFinals.com slash aortic dissection or in the vascular surgery section of the Zero to Finals surgery book. So let's jump straight in. Aortic dissection refers to when a break or a tear forms on the inner layer of the aorta, allowing blood to flow between the layers of the wall of the aorta. There are three layers to the wall of the aorta, the intima, media and adventitia layer. With aortic dissection, blood enters between the intima and the media layers of the aorta. A false aneurysm full of blood is formed within the wall of the aorta, between the intima and media layers. The term intramural refers to within the walls of the blood vessel. Let's talk about the classification. Aortic dissection most commonly affects the ascending aorta and the aortic arch, but it can affect any part of the aorta. The right lateral area of the ascending aorta is the most common site of a tear in the intima layer, as this is under the most stress from blood being pumped hard out of the heart. There are two classification systems the Stanford system and the DeBakey system. With the Stanford system, a type A dissection is when the dissection affects the ascending aorta before the brachiocephalic artery. A type B dissection refers to when the dissection affects the descending aorta after the left subclavian artery. With the DeBakey system, a type 1 dissection is where it begins in the ascending aorta and involves at least the aortic arch, if not the whole aorta. A type 2 dissection is when the dissection is isolated to the ascending aorta. A type 3A dissection refers to when it begins in the descending aorta and involves only the section of the aorta that's above the diaphragm, so it doesn't go below the diaphragm. And finally, a type 3B dissection refers to when the dissection begins in the descending aorta and involves the aorta extending below the diaphragm. Let's talk about the risk factors. Aortic dissection shares the same risk factors as peripheral arterial disease, such as age, male sex, smoking, hypertension, poor diet, reduce physical activity, and raise cholesterol. Hypertension is a big risk factor. Dissection can be triggered by events that temporarily cause a dramatic increase in blood pressure, such as heavy weightlifting or the use of cocaine. Conditions or procedures that affect the aorta can increase the risk of dissection such as bicuspid aortic valve, coarctation of the aorta, aortic valve replacement, or coronary artery bypass grafts. Conditions that affect the connective tissues can also increase the risk of dissection, notably Ehlers-Danlos syndrome and Marfan syndrome. A tom tip for you, in your exams, if you have a man aged around 60 with a background of hypertension who presents with sudden onset tearing chest pain, he has likely got aortic dissection. It's worth remembering Marfan syndrome and Ehlers-Danlos syndrome as risk factors as these may be asked in exams. Let's talk about the presentation. Aortic dissection can be difficult to spot and the diagnosis is often missed. The typical presentation is a sudden onset, severe, ripping or tearing chest pain. The pain may be in the anterior chest when the ascending aorta is affected or in the back if the descending aorta is affected. 
the pain may change location or migrate over time. Some patients with aortic dissection do not have chest pain. Other features that may suggest aortic dissection are hypertension or a raised blood pressure, differences in blood pressure between the arms, and more than 20 millimeters of mercury difference is significant. A radial pulse deficit, which is where the radial pulse in one arm is decreased or absent and does not match the apex beat. A diastolic murmur. Focal neurological deficits, for example, limb weakness or paresthesia. Chest and abdominal pain occurring together. Collapse, which is also called syncope. And hypotension or a low blood pressure which is a late sign as the dissection progresses. Let's talk about the diagnosis. An ECG and a chest x-ray are often used to exclude other causes, such as a myocardial infarction or a heart attack, although they may be normal or falsely reassuring in aortic dissection. A myocardial infarction can occur in combination with aortic dissection, and treatment of the myocardial infarction, for example thrombolysis, can cause fatal progression of the aortic dissection. If you stop the blood from clotting and there's an aortic dissection occurring, this can cause bleeding and worsening of the condition. A bedside ultrasound scan can be used as a rapid test in A&E to look for aortic dissection. A CT angiogram is usually the initial investigation to confirm the diagnosis and can generally be performed very quickly. An MRI angiogram provides greater detail and can help with planning management, but it often takes longer to get an MRI scan than a CT scan. Let's talk about management. Aortic dissection is a surgical emergency and it needs immediate involvement of experienced seniors vascular surgeons, anaesthetists and intensive care teams. There is a very high mortality. Analgesia, for example morphine, is required to help manage the pain. Blood pressure and heart rate will need to be well controlled to reduce the stress on the aortic walls. This usually involves beta blockers. Surgical intervention from the vascular team will depend on the type of the aortic dissection. A type A dissection, which remember affects the ascending aorta before the brachiocephalic artery, may be treated with open surgery with a midline stenotomy incision to remove the section of the aorta with the deficit in the wall and replace it with a synthetic graft. The aortic valve may need to be replaced during the same procedure. A type B dissection, which remember affects the descending aorta after the left subclavian artery, may be treated with thoracic endovascular aortic repair, or TVAR. This involves inserting a catheter via the femoral artery and then inserting a stent graft into the affected section of the descending aorta. Complicated cases may require open surgery. Finally, let's talk about the complications. There's a long list of complications of aortic dissection. Some of the key ones to remember are myocardial infarction, stroke, paraplegia with motor or sensory impairment in the legs, cardiac tamponade, aortic valve regurgitation, and finally death. If you like this video, consider joining the Zero to Finals Patreon account, where you get early access to these videos before they appear on YouTube. You also get access to my comprehensive course on how to learn medicine and do well in medical exams, digital flashcards for rapidly testing the key facts you need for medical exams, early access to the Zero to Finals podcast episodes, and question podcasts which you can use to test your knowledge on the go. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.